Are you ready for another adventure on the high seas? As we learn about some new things about this wonderful book, the Bible, the treasure that is greater than gold. Come along now as we join those buccaneers and see what they're up to today. Ahoy there, mateys! Are ye ready for a joke? Aye, aye! Have ye heard any good pirate jokes lately? No! Well, neither have I, aye! <laughs> this next joke be a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? A pirate trying to find his matey. Take a look. Wormy matey. Hmm, not here. Where'd he go? Huh, where my matey be? Here he is! I'm coming, matey! Wait for me! Here I come! Me, matey! There, that's better. What is the Bible? The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, and dreams, and together they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of His amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything that we see. God continued to speak through a family that He chose to show His love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected Him, they were taken into exile and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending His Son Jesus to earth to fix our friendship with Him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus, it spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again, which is really a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much he loves you. Everyone 
Good news, better than gold, better than anything you've been told. Yo ho, God gave his son, this good news is for everyone. Yo ho, away we go, we'll tell everybody that we know. Yo ho, away we go, away we go with a yo ho ho. Let's play this or that. Listen out for a question. If ye think the answer is on this side of the screen, wave your arms this way. And if ye think the answer is on that side of the screen, wave your arms that way. Ready? Here we go. Question one. What did pirates think would happen if someone whistled? A storm or a rainbow? A storm. Question two. What did the prophets in the Bible do? Give people messages from God or take people's money? Prophets gave people messages from God. Question three, what's better than gold? God's word or a pirate ship? God's word is better than gold. Hey. Guess what? I can think of five things about pirates in 20 seconds. Cool. I can think of 10 things about pirates in 20 seconds. Well, I can think of 15 things about pirates in 20 seconds. Prove it. Wow, that was pretty impressive. You wrote down a lot about pirates. Thank you. You know the whole writing stuff down thing reminds me of? I think I do. Are you thinking of the story about Jeremiah? Ah, uh, no. I was thinking about pirates who keep a daily journal. Were you thinking about the story of Jeremiah? Yes. Because just like you wrote down all of these things, Jeremiah wrote down everything God said to him. He was like a messenger from God, and the Bible calls these messengers prophets. A message from the Lord came to Jeremiah. Bah, 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 bah. Jeremiah, get a scroll and write on it all the messages I've spoken to you. Okay, I'm ready when you are. This message is for the nations of Israel. Something for you. And Judah. Something for you. And all the other nations. And something for you too. God continued, write all the words I've spoken to you from the time that Josiah was king until now. Uh, that's a long time. Maybe the people of Judah will hear what I am planning to do to them and will stop doing bad things. If they will do that, I will forgive them for the terrible sins they have committed. Whoa. So Jeremiah called a man named Baruch, who was a scribe. Baruch? What a name. Jeremiah spoke the messages the Lord had given him, and as he spoke, Baruch wrote the messages on the scroll. Don't worry about it, Jerry. I got you covered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. Then Jeremiah said to Baruch, I cannot go to the Lord's temple. I'm not allowed to go there. You shall not pass. So he told Baruch, I want you to go to the temple and read the words of the Lord you wrote down as I spoke them to you. Hey, yo, listen up. Jeremiah thought that if the people heard what God said, maybe they would stop doing evil things. So Baruch did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. He went to the temple. He opened up the scroll and he read to the people everything God said would happen if they didn't believe him and do what was right. Yikes. God even had a warning for the king that no one from his royal family would rule after him. The king didn't like what Baruch read from the scroll, so he burned it. Whoa, 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 rude. The king should have believed what God said because God's word proved true and the king's son never got to rule. Ha, <laughs> told you. But Jeremiah was only one of God's messengers known as the prophets. In fact, 17 books in the Old Testament part of the Bible were written by people who heard from God and shared his messages with the world. The cool part is that none of the prophets' messages ever came from what they wanted to say. Instead, they were normal people who were, wait, what are you doing? Just being a normal person, carry on. Uh, okay, so they were normal people guided by the Holy Spirit who spoke messages they heard from God himself. The most important message... Wait, wait, hold up. 
This is the most important message. Yes, the prophet shared that God was going to send someone special to save everyone from all the wrongs we do. And with that, all of God's messages proved true when He, he sent, sent Jesus. Jesus. And boy, am I glad. Me too. God's word is true. God's word is true. Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. God's word is true. Everyone, get on your feet and sing along. Let's learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody! Hebrews and James! Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah! We did it! That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. Follow the treasure. Now where's the treasure? Are you serious? There are some pretty amazing things in the Bible. See if you can figure out which of these actually happened. A. Dry bones in a valley came to life. B. The smoke from a burning plant blinded people. Or C. A flame inside a waterfall never burned out. It was A. In a book of the Bible called Ezekiel, there's a true story about a prophet named Elijah who got a word from God. God told Ezekiel to prophesy or give a message to a bunch of dry bones. When he did, they actually came to life. Seriously, that really happened. You can read it for yourself in Ezekiel chapter 37. Pretty amazing, right? Ahoy! Let's learn a verse from God's Word. Psalm 119, 140 tells us why the Bible is such a good gift from God to His people. Let's see if you can learn it by filling in the blanks. Shout out the word you think is missing. Your to me. Your word! You got it! <laughs> Let's do another one! Your word to me, your servant, is like pure... <laughs> gold! That's it! Just one more! I... What you... 
I treasure what you say. <laughs> we'll shiver me timbers. You got it. Let's say it all together now. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold. I treasure what you say. <laughs> you can find that treasure in Psalm 119, 140. Nice work, mateys. Ah, nice work. All right, me crew, get up and dance like a pirate. questions you can ask. The first question is what? What did we read in God's Word today? Did we read about A. God's words to Jeremiah, B. David Jones Locker, or C. Ruth and Naomi? The answer is A. We read about how God gave a special message to the prophet named Jeremiah. Then Jeremiah had his friend, Baruch, to write it all down and read it out loud for everyone to hear. And even though the king didn't want to believe it, God's word proved true. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is, so what? Or in other words, why does this matter to me? You might be wondering what God said to Jeremiah thousands of years ago has to do with you and me today. But there's actually a lot we can take from this one. See. Just like the people who were disobeying God, sometimes we can choose the wrong things. God cared about his people enough to send them messages to help them do what was right. And he does the same thing for us when we read his words in the Bible. The other big thing to remember about this story is that God's words are always true. And the last question to ask yourself is, now what? Now what do we do with what we've learned? Well, there are a couple things we can do. We can remember everything that God says is true, even if other people don't believe it. And we can let God help us do what's right by reading his words to us every day. And whenever you read the Bible, remember to ask yourself, what, so what, now what? Now let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray together. Father God, your word is really a treasure. Whenever we don't know what to do or what to believe, show us exactly what we need to hear from your word. We know that your word is true and we can trust you. We love you. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's word is true. Yeah!